dear participants we have with us uh, for this afternoon lecture sessions uh, dr amrutholli madam uh, dr amrutholli madam is presently serving as a associate professor in the department of studies in uh, genetics and genomics and uh, formerly is also <coughs> serving at uh, center for information science and technology in state of mysore in fact she obtained her master degree in zoology and uh, phd both from uh, institute of uh, bangalore university and uh, our area of specialization is uh, neuroendocrinology bioinformatics genomics and proteomics molecular modeling drug designing graphics and animation computational statistical analysis etc and she also have posted a diploma in multimedia animation and a diploma in programming and uh, she also designed many courses and developed many courses like a postgraduate diploma in bioinformatics msc in bioinformatics pg diploma in animation ms animation msc it etc at uh, cist and he also participated in academic bodies as a chairman member of many boards and committees and uh, she published more than 30 research papers in various uh, nationally and internationally reputed uh, journals and she also uh, guiding the projects of msc bioinformatics students and be biotechnology students and uh, since 15 years she is uh, training and consultation she is giving training and consultation in uh, bioinformatics software tools and she also completed a good number of uh, research projects as a principal investigator and co principal investigator and she brought uh, the grants from ugc and dbt to the tune of uh, more than 5 uh, crores to the institute of mysore and uh, with this brief i welcome moderately dr uh, amrutholli madam to this uh, online lecture session and she is going to deliver a lecture on the topic now on learning management system and uh, e content uh, development uh, once again welcome dr Ma amrutholli madam to this online lecture session on behalf of all the participants through online and also behalf of the hrd center and staff myself over to dr amrutholli madam thank you sir thank you for the introduction and uh, giving me the opportunity to interact with the young minds the teacher trainers the and uh, people who are going to train the future citizens of our country so once again uh, with the scenario of uh, changing technology as teachers we have to adopt to the new technology before that i just want to test are you able to see my slide all of you yes madam yes, yes madam are you able to hear me yes, yes madam. madam okay so all of you are aware uh, by now that the technology is uh, making a great impact especially information technology and uh, communication networking technology has uh, made a great impact on our lives it can be our uh, banking sector or it can be the devices that we are using in our home or it can be various other day to day activities that we are doing like using some of the social media apps that we are using very routinely so this uh, technology in other words what i want to emphasize over here is uh, the information technology and information communication technology in other words ict has made a great impact on our lives so when uh, so much in the other fields other than uh, teaching and other scientific work information technology we are using in almost every sphere of our life why not utilize it uh, in our uh, uh, career uh, that is as teachers in order to communicate more effectively with the students so specifically what i want to emphasize over here is uh, the learning management uh, system or the in house learning from uh, remote experts or from the world was uh, more than a decade uh, the industries was uh, very uh, critically practicing because especially uh, the computer science uh, uh, graduates engineering graduates when they were recruited uh, to the software industry uh, nearly for 6 months uh, they had to give a in house training Uh, so this in-house training, instead of sending the students uh, or uh, calling the experts from different parts of the world uh, to give the training, they were using the, the ICT facilities uh, to train the students. So this was uh, 
because of the cost effectiveness and also the large number of uh, students, uh, uh, say whoever was uh, appointed in the software industry, uh, they could have been uh, addressed uh, very critically and also their skill level of learning was evaluated. So uh, either I, I have to say, uh, in one perspective, I have to say that thanks to the uh, Corona period, uh, where uh, all the teachers, whether they want it or not, whether they liked it or not, they had to upgrade to uh, the virtual classroom technology. Because why I am telling this Corona period, uh, thanks to the Corona period is, for example, so almost from two decades, right from 2000, uh, we, we were trying to train the student, uh, these students also on teachers and uh, various other experts from the industry with the ICT technology in teaching. Engineering teachers we have addressed and almost all university students around uh, India, they came to our center, they underwent how to use the ICT technology in classroom teaching. And also whatever today you are seeing with uh, the Baijus or Vedantam or uh, uh, any other Coursera or uh, uh, say uh, Linda, so these are the different sites today, which are very popular among uh, uh, the technology students. Uh, we, we tried to introduce uh, such a type of technology way back in 2000 itself and train the students and also train the teachers to adopt uh, to the say two decades afterwards, we are uh, say everybody is uh, following this technology. But in 2000 itself, we tried to introduce to the teachers and we trained them how to work in network, how to reach out uh, to the teachers, the teacher-student uh, uh, relationship, how they will be able to establish uh, using the ICT facilities. So in that context, I have given this particular para, like many industries and institutions before, higher education has been an explosion in uh, technical uh, innovation and solution in the recent years from enrollment systems uh, to learning content and then uh, say fundraising platforms and more the sheer number of tools available to lay or uh, say platforms are available some of them are free uh, platforms and some of them are paid uh, platforms in order to specifically uh, train the young mind, and according to a company called as uh, TechCrunch, they have made a survey. Nearly around uh, 20 to 25 countries, they have made a survey before launching some of the LMS platforms. So specifically, they very critically say that uh, the learning management system it is like a it is like a pla software platform. All of you are familiar with uh, the Ola. All of you are familiar with uh, the, say, Zomato. So these are all software platforms where uh, specifically the LMS is in such a way it is programmed that the student can be a stakeholder over here, the teacher can be a stakeholder over here, the administrators of the college or a university can be the stakeholders here, and even the parents can be uh, members over here. So that why uh, the I'm going to discuss over here why the university authorities or college administration have to be stakeholders over here is they'll be able to know how many uh, teachers are offering how many courses and how many students have enrolled and how many students have sincerely utilized uh, the facility. So all these statistics we will be able to take uh, and then we will be able to do the statistical analysis. Similarly, the students also uh, will be uh, the main, uh, uh, say, uh, component of this particular uh, LMS module is uh, the from the student perspective, the student need not uh, uh, struggle, uh, you know, for the sake of notes or uh, online or offline or live classes can be taken from the same platform. And all the course material can be systematically uh, posted in the LMS platform. So that is why I have given over here, any program we will be able to plan in a critical way, implement and assess uh, a specific learning process. The 
program can be very well planned the paper that i have to deliver the subject that i have to in other words the subject that i have to uh, engage uh, in this particular semester to the students well ahead i will be able to prepare my uh, lesson plan and then i will be able to prepare the course material over here and then systematically i will be able to plan my course well ahead and then planning is more important over here it, uh, it is the major part and over that one will be able to implement implementation so where do you implement it see before uh, the lms all of us have seen during the covid period that we were sell, uh, sending our ppt to uh, whatsapp or we will uh, sharing our google drive uh, uh, storage folder with the students so these are all uh, what we i am going to say that a non professional way distributing the content distributing the material or distributing the pdf files or the powerpoint files uh, is not a big job we will be able to use so many uh, readily available social platforms and then we will be able to distribute it to the students more than that more than implementation the assessment of uh, the students is more important over here how many hours they have studied our course material have they really opened uh, the files that uh, we have sent to them and then uh, in, in order to conduct the test will be it is will be very easy assignments we will be able to post and uh, they will be able to submit the assignment online there itself we will be able to assess so assessment is another uh, major uh, activity that we are doing so whatever activity that we are going to do in a physical classroom or in a physical academic year whatever activity that we are going to do it in the classroom we have to use the computer and we have to do the same activities so that is why a robust uh, software platform is needed that you are going to call it as uh, the learning management system lms uh, expansion of lms is uh, the learning management system Uh, for a, a specific process tailor made the uh, whatever course uh, that is being offered uh, can be very critically tailor made and accordingly uh, one will be able to uh, deliver our content so before going into the actual uh, lms uh, part of it i would like to show you some uh, statistics over here so whatever pie chart that i am showing over here Uh, the all of you know about uh, the pearson uh, they are the major textbook publishers around the globe so what they made uh, some 5 years back uh, they wanted to release uh, some e content e books uh, into the market uh, before uh, releasing the e books before uh, going for the development of the e books they made a very critical market survey in nearly around for more than 5 years continuously in different countries in european asian and america and the other africa and other countries they made a market survey so a part of the market survey that i am showing over here you will be able to see here uh, nearly the number of mobile devices uh, that are used on a daily basis by the youth you will be able to see only one device nearly 52% of the world population they are having a smartphone in their hand and then nearly 31% of the youth they are having more than one device that is they are having multiple devices and 11% of the entire world population they are having more than two devices that is three to four devices are there and 6% of the population they are not having any type of electronic device over here so just see that more than 52% of the world population is having the youth i'm talking about uh, uh, the say uh, somewhere near below 20 years or 21 years uh, they have done the survey so 52% of uh, the youth they are having at least minimum one device so what is the mean over here is 1.6 that means they are having either a smartphone or a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet so different combination nearly 31% are having the two devices in their hand so next what are these devices so in their questionnaire what are the devices that the students are very regularly using is a smartphone 
maybe uh, less than five and a half inches or smaller, or a larger smartphone with internet facility and other uh, latest apps. So larger than uh, five and a half inches. And uh, some of them, along with the smartphone, they are also having uh, the tablets or a hybrid laptop. That is, it can be used as a tablet and also it can be used as a laptop. Or uh, some of the students, they are also having a very high-end uh, Chromebook or a Apple notebook or any other uh, brand laptop. So throughout uh, this report, we mentioned that various mobile devices. So this is a uh, part of the uh, Pearson survey that I am showing it to you. And then one more statistics is uh, when uh, they have asked uh, questions uh, to the students that 36% of uh, the students, I'm among the first people to check out new electronic device and gadget. Of course, uh, this depends upon their family financial position. So 36% of the youth, uh, the moment a new technology comes into the market, they are going to jump to purchase that particular technology and try out. And uh, nearly 55% of the students, they usually wait until I see others try new technology and then I will uh, try it myself. So here you are going to see this 55% of the type people uh, generally, this group is uh, between, uh, say, specifically about 20 uh, age group. These people, they will wait whether the technology is uh, adoptable or technology is good or not, and then they are going to utilize it. And then uh, the 10% of uh, the population where they have studied is I tend to wait a long time to try new technology. This is only 10%. You will be able to see here. So what I want to emphasize over here, the craze among the youth for the electronic devices, it can be tablets, it can be laptop, or it can be gaming devices or gaming consoles, or it can be the latest uh, model smartphone. So uh, they are highly, uh, say, uh, adopted or savvy towards uh, the new technology. Here a histogram is, uh, Tablet will transform the way college students will learn in the future. So this is uh, the opinion given by the students. Tablets encourage students to buy digital textbooks instead of uh, print textbooks. And I know more than my professors about how to use tablets and other computers for learning. So this is, uh, uh, the uh, say, the questionnaire uh, survey uh, extract, statistical extract that I'm showing over here. Tables make learning more fun. Uh, tablets make uh, uh, learning more fun. And then tablets will effectively replace textbooks as we know them today uh, within uh, the next five years. Tablets help students to study more efficiently. And then tablets help students to perform better in the class. Nearly uh, 68 to till 68% uh, they have opined and uh, this statistics is taken not just one year or they have not taken uh, only in a small uh, population, nearly from 2011 to 2015 before uh, the release of uh, uh, the e-books into the market, the Pearson has done this particular survey and uh, this is a very strong uh, statistics that we are going to see over here. Uh, that uh, nearly feel that tablets help them to perform better in the class. So the textbooks are really available. The study material is really readily available. And then on the other hand, uh, why I have very specifically introduced this slide is attitude towards mobile devices usage in the class. So nearly you will be able to say that I would like to use mobile devices more often in the class. See, uh, 40 to 43% 40 of the students are open. And I'm currently using mobile device at just the right amount in the class. So 47 to 44%, I would like to use mobile device less often in the class. So that ranges only to 13 to 17%. So nearly for four to five years, uh, the Pearson has uh, made this particular survey. So the, my question over here, we are adopting the information technology in almost all walks of our life. It can be banking sector, it can be e-commerce, and very easily we are sitting at home and then we are ordering the 
material either in the Amazon site or in the Flipkart or in any other site very easily we are uh, doing the purchases today without uh, physically going to the shops. So why not adopt the same ICT facility? Why not adopt the information technology facility in education? So th that is where the question of learning management system softwares are going to come in. So what exactly is uh, the learning management system software is? It is a robust uh, teaching learning platform that helps institutions manage academic in a systematic manner by maintaining detailed records of classroom activities and enhances teacher-student collaboration with learning management system. So whatever physically we are doing in a classroom environment, the same activity we are doing using a computer, using the networking facilities. And of course, we are using a dedicated uh, software tool in order to connect to the students and also deliver our content to the students effectively. And also evaluation also has to be done uh, in an effective way. So what exactly is uh, the learning management system? Uh, it is basically, we have to understand that it is a software tool. Uh, so uh, institutions uh, to track uh, reporting, training, uh, programs, automation, and delivery of educational courses, learning and uh, development programs, maintain classroom activities, records, uh, create the best syllabus, uh, teaching plans and online assessment to maximize to the students' uh, learning outcomes. So it is not just, as I said, it is not just the delivery of the content uh, to the students. It is we have to interact with them, how physically we are going to interact with the students in the same way in a virtual environment, we have to interact with the students and evaluation has to be done. It is, for example, if you are going to deliver a chapter PPT to the student via WhatsApp mail, we will not know whether a student has gone through that PPT or not. But if he is there in a learning management platform, very clearly we will be able to monitor whether he has opened that file, how many minutes he went to, through that particular file, and what are the slides uh, that he has gone through. So all these things can be systematically tracked. So that's the whole idea over here. And uh, it gives uh, the student also will be at convenience because in one single window, in one application, he will be able to get all the material that he has to study uh, for that particular uh, semester. So learning has shifted from uh, lifelong to life-wide learning. So that is what uh, the experts are going to very specifically use the word. It is uh, lifelong to life-wide learning. The new educational landscape demands a new version of uh, teaching learning methodologies where teachers can perform exam analysis and goal output analysis and plan appropriate teaching syllabus and help students to learn at their own pace. So for example, we are going to see, so with uh, more than uh, three decades of uh, uh, teaching experience, uh, every semester students uh, will not be the same. Every batch of students will not be the same. One batch will be very smooth. Uh, they will be there in the same uh, uh, say level so that we will be able to deliver the content to them uniformly and we will be able to sometimes uh, we are going to go beyond syllabus uh, and discuss the topics depending upon their response to the subject. But in the next batch or previous batch or earlier batch, we may face a different scenario that uh, it might be a mixture of, uh, uh, say, cream students, the average students and below average students. So at that time, what is going to happen? Uh, we have to deliver uh, the content to the students, keeping this heterogeneous uh, level of students in the classroom. So that is why I have given very clearly that uh, every student, uh, they will have their own uh, learning methodology and uh, they will have their own learning speed or pace. 
So what is going to happen when we are going to give our uh, lectures recorded videos or the PPTs or the PDF notes, they will be able to open multiple number of times. They will be able to listen to it any number of times that they require. They can pass the lectures or they can go through the PPT uh, according to their convenience and then they'll be able to learn. So that is why basically uh, the LMS platform is going to help the student and also the teacher will know that how many hours he has, a student has uh, spent in reading the material that is given to him. So communicate with them at any time and plan their studies for achieving their goal. So this is a very, uh, a very critical uh, evaluation that we will be able to do. And if the parents are also part of the LMS means that will be an added advantage. The parent also periodically can log into the LMS and they can see what are the activities their children have done, how many lesson plans uh, they have gone through. So all these statistics uh, they will be able to very critically see. So exactly what is uh, a LMS is a, as I have mentioned earlier, it is a software uh, platform where it, this is the teacher room. So very, uh, you require a hardware over here and the internet facility is needed. And a, a student should have a laptop and the teacher also should have a desktop or a laptop or a tablet. Uh, or the student also should have a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop. So that is where your hardware requirement and uh, the installation of uh, the LMS platform is, this is the system requirement. Then a teacher can systematically in a very professional way, they will be able to develop the content. They will be able to offer the courses on this particular platform. So LMS is basically a, a software over here. And then evaluation, what do you mean by tracking is whether the student has gone through the material that is given to him, whether the students have opened the uh, lecture videos uh, that is given to him. And also from the institutional side, uh, the management will be able to uh, see how the students uh, and the teachers are interacting. And uh, if the students are having any problem, uh, the technical administrator will be able to solve that. So ultimately what is going to ha have over here is uh, you are uh, going beyond uh, a particular level and facilitating the students uh, to become more skilled. And uh, the question over here is, all of you have heard about uh, the word skill. So the student, whatever course that he is going to undergo, he should be knowledgeable in that. So based on that, he should be able to get into uh, some job. So what are the features of uh, the LMS that we are going to see over here is, So learning management system, very specifically, uh, it should contain certain uh, requirements, certain basic requirements all has to be there. First and foremost thing is uh, the uh, dashboard or uh, the software that they are going to design. It should be a, a positive design or a responsive design should be there. So this is, and also, uh, the LMS platform should be highly user friendly and uh, interactive interface should be there. It is not just delivering the content. Uh, it should not be a unidirectional delivery of the content to the students. The student also should be able to approach the teacher. The student also should be able to interact with the uh, teacher. So that is where uh, the interactive interface is uh, more important over here. And with the computer knowledge or without computer knowledge, uh, the child should be able to use uh, the LMS platform. That is why the user friendliness has to be there. And then reporting and uh, data analytics. So this is the most important part of it. So say for example, nearly uh, 60 students are there in a particular class, let us say uh, BSc, PCM, so whether all the 60 students, uh, physics, chemistry, mathematics, and uh, two languages will be there. So specifically, 
uh, whether the students uh, have undergone uh, through the course material that is provided to them, all the uh, lesson plans, uh, have they studied sincerely, have they gone through the uh, material that is given to them, one will be able to do a statistical analysis. How many students have utilized it? How many students have utilized it? Which uh, a course material more, which course material is not at all open. So all this data analysis, one will be able to do it. And then course and catalog management can be done very effectively and provision should be there in the software. And then content integration. Content integration in the sense, uh, whether you are providing it in the form of a video, audio, or it can be a PDF or it can be uh, any other type of material that you are going to give, uh, the content integration has to happen uh, in the LMS platform. And there has to be a, a technical support uh, group should be there. That, that uh, technically we are going to call it as an admin. For example, if a teacher is going to find some problem in uploading certain files, or a student is finding some problem in downloading the content or accessing the content or logging into the system. At the time, there should be a 24 by seven dedicated team should be there in order to support the student. Then certification and compliance support. Certification, for example, if you are going to see the Coursera platform, you're going to see that very systematically the course content will be delivered. And the moment you are going to complete the test, that is given, automatically the certification uh, uh, will be delivered uh, to the mail of that particular candidate. And then it should not be uh, just like uh, the black and white uh, delivery uh, is not going to attract uh, the egg minds. There has to be quiz. In other words, uh, you have to use uh, the graphics effectively over here. That is gam uh, gamification. Quiz should be there and uh, some type of uh, uh, graphics can be used over here and uh, very, uh, say, mind uh, blogging or uh, attractive uh, quiz can be uh, done and created and uh, delivered to the students. And also now, some of the latest LMS that are available in the market, they are also going to, in they have integrated, the software companies have integrated artificial intelligent uh, service into it. For example, uh, what, what do you mean by that? So in my area, if I have to say, for example, I'm going to take a course in a PER program and then I'm going to do the PER certification means immediately I'm going to get uh, a course material that I'm going to look. Uh, since you have gone through the PER, this course content may also be of interest to you or these textbooks are maybe of interest to you or uh, these notes or these programs may be of interest to you. So such type of suggestions are going to come in. Or on the other hand, uh, if I have done a course in Perl, means immediately I'm going to get one more done. Since you have done a course in uh, the Perl software, probably the Python programming may be of interest to you. So such type of positive suggestions and uh, positive tips and feedbacks will be given by the software in an automated way. So. Uh, that will be possible only when uh, the artificial intelligence, that is the AI is integrated into the LMS software. So what is the summary of this slide that I want to emphasize over here is uh, the LMS uh, should uh, act like uh, uh, a very uh, user-friendly platform from the teacher's point of view also. The teacher should not have any hurdle. Any, there should not be any technical hurdle for the teacher. Because uh, some of the teachers, not necessarily that always they are there from the computer science background, they will be from arts, commerce, science, from various disciplines, the teachers will be there. And uh, the teacher should not have any technical glitch, in other words. Very easily, they should be able to upload their content and very easily they will be able to handle the LMS dashboard uh, and uh, they will be able to, in a systematic way, they will be able to structure their course. So this is from the teacher's perspective. And from the student perspective, the students may log in from uh, different devices. It can be a tablet, it can be a handheld a smartphone, or it can be a desktop, 
or it can be a laptop of any type of operating system. It can be Apple or it can be Linux or it can be Windows. Windows, different versions of operating system are there. So all this uh, should, the student also should not have any uh, technical problem in logging in uh, to the LMS and accessing uh, the content that is posted in the uh, LMS platform. So that is where uh, that the second point that I am emphasizing is user-friendly and interactive interface. Absolutely, there should not be any uh, technical problem here. So uh, specifically, uh, the, in terms of whatever device the student is going to log in, he should be able to log in very easily. Otherwise, if he is going to face some problem, what is going to happen? He may leave that uh, lesson or he may not open that file and he may move on. So that shouldn't happen. The whole idea of uh, LMS over here is uh, in a centralized uh, system in any device from anywhere, uh, he should be able to log in and access the content and uh, read the content effectively. So the this is a uh, very critical technical class, uh, classification of the LMS is made. So who are our target audience? Are they employees to be trained in a particular skill or are they students? So that is why corporate learning management system, corporate learning management system was the first learning management system to come into the uh, market with uh, high efficiency because in-house training has to be given uh, to the uh, newly employed uh, employees uh, or depending upon on uh, what project they are assigned. So that is why the corporate learning uh, management platforms uh, came into use uh, very effectively in the corporate companies. But whereas uh, slowly that transform uh, into the academic learning management systems. So, and uh, that took a re revolution or uh, that took a major uh, popularity uh, during this uh, corona period. So here uh, I'm showing you a flow chart over here, uh, wherein what are the activities that we are going to do? Uh, specifically, you will be able to see over here uh, the very uh, first activity uh, that will be done is uh, the maintenance, uh, the track uh, and reporting has to be done. And then uh, the records of the students has to be maintained, the assignments or the tests that they are going to take. And then student uh, performance evaluation has to be done and personalized communication. For example, if a, uh, in some unit, a student has not performed well, then we have to contact him and we have to see uh, what exactly is the problem of that particular child, why he has performed uh, in a highly uh, poor way in that particular unit. So personalized communication should be available in the LMS. And also uh, say specifically, we should be able to generate uh, the appropriate report. The performance reports has to be, so in other words, that is called as the management or the miscellaneous reports, you will be able to call it. We have to generate how many hours he has spent or how many tests he has attended, what is his uh, uh, average performance in that particular subject. So all this uh, can be generated and uh, if the parents are a party of this LMS, uh, they will be able to access it and uh, see this. The most important over here is uh, the cost effectiveness and also at the time of implementation, it might be costly, but in the over the years, it will work out uh, uh, very, very effectively. Uh, so these are the activities that uh, we one has to do very specifically when they are there in the LMS system over here. So, uh, so what exactly I would like to emphasize over here, if you are there in a hybrid mode or any other mode, so specifically leveraging technology in education, what is the ultimate aim of a teacher over here is the student uh, should be able to understand the concept that we are trying to explain to him, whether uh, you use a hybrid model or a totally a online LMS module you are using or a physical class 
with the LMS you are using. So whatever is uh, the combination that the teacher is uh, using is, uh, you are trying to leverage uh, by ut utilizing uh, the technology. Uh, the technology has to be used uh, in order to uh, specifically make the student comfortable and understand. So specifically uh, leveraging the technology in education to make the digital shift and attain the best uh, specifically student and hassle-free learning process has to be there. Absolutely, there has to be a, a hassle-free learning system should be there uh, uh, for the student. And then uh, during the transition, most of the educators find it difficult uh, to align with the LMS. So especially uh, the non-tech savvy generation of the teachers, uh, because this I have seen with my uh, 30 to 32 years of uh, teacher training experience, uh, we have seen in our department that initially way back in 2000, we were having a lot of, uh, say, uh, resistance uh, by the professors and teachers in order to adopt this technology. To use the uh, LCD projector and to prepare the PPT itself, uh, they used to uh, resist a lot. And uh, they were using very specifically only the overhead projectors, OHP projectors, and uh, on those pla plastic sheets, uh, they used to write in hand, and then they used to project the notes. When we were telling, look here, there is a technology wherein you will be able to prepare and present your idea in a better way means uh, they used to find it very difficult uh, and a lot of resistance uh, they used to show. Uh, this will be there, but when once a teacher is convinced and uh, he is going to uh, practice the content delivering through the ICT facilities, uh, he will uh, feel the difference. It will be very easy when once the upgradation of technology is going to adopt. So the what is the advantage over here is systematic record maintenance of student activities. One will be able to, in, in, in a very transparent way, the student also will be able to see, the principal of the college also will be able to see, the teacher also will be able to see, the parents also will be able to see. So all the four stakeholders uh, will be a party over here. So the most important part of it is in a very accurate way, uh, the student activities can be maintained, whether he has gone through all the lesson plans, whether he has opened all the lecture videos, whether he has attended all the assignments and he has submitted and tests he has taken, what is his performance over there. So all this can be very critically, uh, the records can be in a very systematic way it can be uh, maintained. Then another point before the start of this particular course, creating an effective syllabus and teaching plan. From the teacher perspective, a teacher will be able to well in advance, he will be able to plan the things. And uh, one will be able to say that uh, effective syllabus, uh, outdated uh, subjects can be removed, outdated topics can be removed, whatever new development that is happening can be incorporated. And the syllabus, uh, one will be able to sit and think, of course, in a, uh, say, classical uh, university uh, say degree or uh, postgraduate, uh, the syllabus framing uh, is not uh, in the hand of the teacher because that is approved by the BOS and the syllabus is, uh, when the approved syllabus is given to the teacher. So the teacher is not having much uh, freedom over here uh, to plan the syllabus. But according to the syllabus, one will be able to develop the content. So providing uh, relevant and advanced uh, e-content. So this is most important. We have to, in a very systematic way, whether it is a, a video file that we are providing or whether we are providing them with the audio file or whether we are just providing the PDF to them or whether we are uh, very critically uh, providing the uh, PowerPoint presentations alone, uh, so this we have to see or any other uh, supportive textbooks we are providing. So providing relevant and uh, advanced e-content uh, to the student is the responsibility of the teacher. So this he will be able to very critically plan and he will be able to uh, execute. 
And then evaluation of the student is the most important part of it. So creating and conducting online test and assessments. So it will be a highly transparent system. One will be able to see uh, what uh, very critically one will be able to conduct the assessment and the teacher also uh, will be able to uh, plan well ahead and uh, say prepare the uh, say ass assignment uh, topics and also the test papers. Everything can be in a very systematic way. It can be planned and hosted in the LMS platform. And assessment will be highly transparent. A student can be able to open his uh, answer sheet and see where he has uh, gone wrong, what wrong answer he has written over there, and uh, where he has lost the marks. And so that he can think of improving his performance in the uh, next uh, uh, test. So grading and uh, tracking student progress. So very critically, uh, it will be if it is a, for example, in uh, MSc, we are having a continuous evaluation. For 2020 marks, uh, three times we are going to evaluate the students unit wise. So the student uh, will be able to very critically know the grading and also he will be able to track. So the grading and tracking can also be seen by the parents. Uh, so this way they will be able to see their awards uh, or children performance over here. And uh, this particular platform, generally we are going to, uh, if we are going to go one step further towards the students means, it can be a strong uh, teacher and uh, student uh, relationship and collaboration can be established here. So the learning management uh, software is a comprehensive online platform uh, built to provide uh, the students uh, a very non-problematic or a higher level of e-learning experience by engaging students and booting their learning outcomes. So every it can act like a promoter. And uh, what I that the initial slides I showed you is. Now the current generation students, they are very savvy with electronic devices. So what happens is when 24 by seven, they are looking at the Facebook, when 24 by seven, they are upgrading their status in the WhatsApp, 24 by seven, they are there on the Twitter. So why not 24 by seven? In fact, I'm going to say that their hand is permanently attached to the mobile means it is better to deliver the content through that device so that it is always there in their hand and they are tech savvy so that they will be able to access the content uh, very easily through that particular uh, uh, electronic device. So it enables uh, specifically uh, what I mean to say over here is uh, by engaging students and boosting their uh, learning outcomes. We have we have to promote, we have to inculcate uh, interest in that particular subject. And we have to see that somehow they are uh, uh, very well uh, knowledgeable in that particular uh, uh, say subject that they have uh, studied. It enables uh, faculty to systematically maintain classroom activities, records, create the learning objective oriented syllabus, teaching plans and online assessment, which would benefit students in terms of enhancing their skills and creating a learning uh, driven environment. Furthermore, the virtual classroom integration allows students and teachers to stay on the same page and collaborate hassle free at any given point of time. So this is what is needed. So both of them are there on the same software page. We will know, we will be able to monitor or we will be able to, from time to time, we will be able to generate a report of the student performance and uh, uh, how much they have utilized uh, the course material that is provided. So thereby, what I mean to say over here is, earlier, uh, the student and teachers were used to be there in the same room, but now virtually we have to be there on the same page. So the only shift over here is the technology that has happened. What was uh, the earlier physical classroom, the teacher and the student were to be there in the same environment. Today, in an electronic environment, we have to be there in the same environment here. That's the difference that we have to adopt over here. Uh, so while uh, specifically, I'm going to show you some of the free learning management system and also the paid learning management softwares. 
So depending upon the financial position of uh, the uh, institution, they will be able to think. But of course, the robust uh, uh, hardware uh, server is needed, or they'll be able to now in the present scenario, no need of uh, having any hardware in the college itself. They'll be able to do a cloud hosting, uh, a, or they'll be able to get into a MOU with some uh, LMS maintenance company, and then they very critically, they will be able to, uh, in a very systematic way, the LMS can be delivered in the environment, depending upon uh, the financial position of that particular institution. So the learning management system provide additional features, including ability to create uh, educational content, and uh, all uh, besides the point that trend, most colleges and universities are no longer looking for just one system to manage the virtual classroom. For example, if you are going to see the uh, Manipal Institute or Reva or any other private university websites, or for that particular matter, if you are going to uh, go to the homepage of our University of Mysore, you are going to see that number of uh, uh, Moodle and other uh, online uh, courses are available. So basically, uh, the Moodle LMS system is a free uh, software. So where uh, we will be able to using that Moodle, uh, any institution will be able to develop, encourage the teachers uh, to develop content and uh, create the LMS platform. So before going any further, uh, I'm going to show you the effort made by government of Karnataka. All of you are familiar with this, I think. Online, I'm opening and I'm showing you. So, for example, if you are going to type LMS, automatically you are going to get a suggestion over here LMS Karnataka. So, here you will be able to see the page over here. So, what I'm telling over here, both in Canada and uh, English, uh, this LMS is uh, available. And uh, see here, new age uh, comprehensive learning management system. So contents are available, assessment, performance analytics, and anywhere, anytime access. So then on the other hand, uh, so this is uh, the effort uh, made by the government of Karnataka over here. Uh, the LMS based uh, digital learning Specifically, you will be able to see a novel uh, initiative of the government of Karnataka is a platform to revolutionize the teaching learning process by effective transformative changes in delivery of uh, content and access to assessment. And then here, what I, whatever I so far I mentioned, they have given here as a flow chart over here. You can see here the primary activity is uh, uh, teaching and uh, Specifically, you will be able to see the learning is the most important second activity that should happen, then assessment of the student, and then it is a, a specifically it is a loop. So uh, corrective measures by one cycle we have completed means so what are the lacunae in that? What is lacking in that uh, process we have to do a evaluation. And corrective measures can be taken, improves, improvement can be done over here. So this is uh, the authorities behind the development. So what type of uh, material that can be given over here is video, presentations, study material in terms of uh, e-books or uh, PDF files can be given. And then uh, practice tests and uh, MCQs can be provided over here. So what is the outcome? What is the aim of uh, the present uh, LMS that is developed by government of Karnataka is uh, the teachers are empowered uh, teachers for uh, effective delivery of the content. For example, uh, say uh, in a certain scenario, what is going to happen is we may not have a very good Java teacher in a particular engineering college or some other Java teacher is there in some other engineering college. So at the time, uh, we will be able to uh, say if uh, such a in a such a LMS platform, if the teachers are going to post their uh, lectures 
post their uh, notes, then what is going to happen anywhere from any part of uh, the state, they will be able to log in and they'll be able to access the content if the uh, access uh, to all the contents in the LMS is given or if the access uh, to the student uh, content is given only to the papers that I have taken in the semester, uh, then they will be able to access uh, the content only from that university teachers who have taught uh, and they have uploaded their content uh, uh, to that particular syllabus of the university. Because in Karnataka, what is happening, almost every university has got their own uh, syllabus for UG and PG. The syllabus, though it is, uh, uh, say, uh, is, let us say that uh, MSc Computer Science or MSc Bioinformatics or MSc Genetics, please, every university has got its own uh, syllabus. So at that time, according to the syllabus, the teacher would have delivered. And in, the, in that particular semester, they will have a specific set of five to six papers and practicals. And that uh, notes will be uploaded. And uh, that university student will have a controlled access. He will not be able to uh, access the other course material uh, taught by the other uh, teachers of other universities. He, he will have a restricted access only to this. So depending upon what type of access that is given to the students, based on that, they will be able to uh, get the content. So, uh, so specifically feedback uh, based content upgradation. So that is why they have given over here. Very clearly, you will be able to see here corrective measures. If somebody is going to give a some suggestion over a particular paper content means uh, if some concept is not clear in the delivery, then a corrective measure can be uh, taken in the next cycle. So that is where the feedback uh, content upgradation is possible. Then analytical uh, input enhances uh, teaching effectiveness. It is uh, today's, uh, I'm going to very clearly say that today's teaching is not like uh, when we were students, it was teacher-centric teaching. So whatever they were delivering, we have to accept it, whether it is good or bad or average or below average or very good or excellent. So in, in all this uh, scale, whatever the teacher is going to deliver, the student uh, has to accept uh, that particular content. But in today's scenario, because of the technology, uh, see the student has got access in his mobile phone, he has got access to so many uh, so, for example, uh, in YouTube itself, they will be able to uh, get access to almost all the topics uh, of uh, experts uh, who have delivered and they have uploaded their uh, lecture content or seminar content. Or if you are going to post to some PowerPoint uh, uh, sites like uh, so many slide share and so many other sites are there. So they will be able to get the PPT facilities and so many other resources are available for the student today online easily. So a student will be having awareness about the subject and a highly focused student uh, might uh, come prepared for the class. They may have uh, gone through uh, the lecture of uh, the other uh, teachers from other part of the world and then they might be very well aware. A student uh, might be well prepared, uh, equal or more than a teacher, he might be aware about the subject. So thereby what is going to happen is, uh, in today's scenario, uh, the responsibility of the teacher will be uh, highly more so that uh, they have to uh, prepare the content in a highly compatible way. And when once uh, we are there in a LMS platform, uh, say it is a state a government uh, moderated uh, LMS platform that I'm showing over here. So the content has to be compatible. The content has to be of international quality. Language also has to be of utmost uh, uh, level. So thereby all this uh, responsibility lies on the uh, teacher's side. And coming to the student's responsibility, so broad choice of content, well-organized learning resources, and then assessment-based self-appraisal of learning levels. So here you are going to see over here the videos, PPTs, 
and uh, the PDF study material, e-books and e-content can be given to him. And then number of uh, practice tests and MCQs can be provided to the students. And nearly uh, what is the outcome of this particular effort is it revolutionizes uh, uh, teaching learning process, healthy competition uh, led to self-improvement and then uh, freedom and access to best of the content. So this is the basic requirement of every student and then unlock the true potential of every teacher and student. The teacher is also equally capable and equally talented. And at the same time, the student also uh, will be able to go in the right direction. And in, if he is motivated in a meaningful way. And then who are the stakeholders? Who are the contributors of this particular L LMSs? Here you will be able to see the statistics. Uh, more than uh, 531 colleges have contributed. We will be able to see over here nearly around uh, four uh, uh, 30 government uh, first grad colleges have participated, 14 engineering colleges and 87 polytechnics. And how many students are using? Nearly 3.5 lakh uh, students are using and nearly 24,000 engineering students are using and 87 thousand politics to polytechnic students are utilizing this LMS platform. And uh, who are the contributors, content contributors? Nearly around, uh, we'll be able to see over here, 9,000 permanent uh, teachers have contributed and 16,000 guest faculties have contributed. And where all it is implemented, 14 universities have effectively implemented. So what are, uh, where the facilities is available, both offline and online, and then cloud, and multilingual in many languages, English, Canada, and other languages, it is available. And there is a very robust database of uh, online books are available from this platform. And uh, there is also, as I mentioned in my PowerPoint presentation, that the student-teacher interaction has to be there. The two student and teacher uh, interaction has to be there in a common platform. So there is an opportunity for discussion and uh, these are the technical people and the stakeholders and the owners who are the people who are responsible for this beautiful LMS. Uh, in order to log in, you must have a, a password and user ID has to be there. See here, you can, well, a authorized student, a user ID they will be able to put and they'll be able to put the password over here. And then which university student? So the list of universities are given over here. One will be able to select uh, the appropriate, for example, if he's a University of Mysore student, you can, and accordingly, uh, today, we, uh, the entire uh, admission process and uh, result declaration and also the mass cards are available in the digital locker. That is another major development uh, the government of Karnataka has made in the, you, you say, the UUMS uh, platform. Uh, they are doing that. We are doing the admission through that particular platform and also declaration of the result and uh, the, even the entry of the marks we are doing in the UUMS uh, platform. So thereby, if UUMS platform admission is integrated with LMS means automatically every student who is enrolled either to the PG or UG or BE or whatever course of this particular state, he is going to get a user ID and the password is given and thereby he will be able to log into this particular platform in an effective way. Okay, so this is a, a, a very uh, appreciative, uh, uh, say, venture uh, that our university has made. Uh, and also specifically the government of Karnataka, we should congratulate. So if you come to our University of Mysore, So our website, uh, both in English and uh, Canada, it is available. So specifically, oh. if you are going to come to our homepage of our uh, website, so here you will be able to see an e-content link for the benefit of students to access online learning resources. And uh, from here, if you, you, are, you are able to get number of resources over here,
Swayam courses. Some of our professors are offering and e-patashala and then the MOOC courses. So this is how uh, from IIT Kanpur, Shodganga, and then Vidwan. So these are, and also in television, nearly around six channels are dedicated uh, uh, for a different level online classes. Continuously they are recording and uh, they are showing. So these are the subject-wise uh, material you are able to get over here, see here. We are going to come to this particular facility. So we'll be able to see here uh, Faculty of Arts, uh, Faculty of Science and Technology. So for example, if you are going to come over here, I'm going to show you in the computer science. And then Faculty of Education, Faculty of Commerce, Faculty of Law, MBA. Uh, you're going to get, and one will be able to a uh, completely uh, a zip the content you will be able to download from here. It, it's downloaded over here. You will be able to see this. So this is how uh, student-friendly, student-centric, in order to facilitate the students, a uh, number of facilities are developed uh, by the universities individually. And also whatever I'm showing over here, it is the government initiative that is done, government of Karnataka initiative that is done. And apart from that, we are also having a national uh, uh, facility is also available. I'll show you in the uh, coming session, I'm going to show you. So basically, uh, in the LMS, uh, the main technical team has to be there in order to maintain the LMS uh, software and the hardware and the internet facility. And if the teacher or a student or anybody is going to find any technical glitch, the admin strong, robust admin team has to be there in order to solve this. So the admin login is intended for administrators after logging in, it will give the user access to tools which will enable them to add, remove content and users and adjust settings in certain parts of the learning management system. So this is a, a centralized control of the software can be done by the admin of that particular LMS. So then the important stakeholder of LMS is the teacher. So teachers can establish a course, assign homework, and receive students uh, finalized projects and test results using a teacher login. One of the main benefits of online learning is that it aids uh, teachers in delivering course material and achieving desired results. Uh, teachers can teach online courses as well as hybrid, blended, and uh, flipped classrooms by using the LMS. And then uh, another important, uh, all this uh, uh, technology we are utilizing, whether you are going to teach in the class, whether you are going to teach using the, a blackboard or whether you are going to use a overhead projector and use a PowerPoint or any other type of presentation tool over here. Ultimate aim is we want to educate our students. We want to improve the knowledge level of our students. So here what is going to become is uh, the student is uh, the main focus over here. So the user will get details about their course, unfinished work, links to resources, alert, last date alert uh, will be delivered to his mobile that today is the last day to submit your assignment or tomorrow is your deadline to submit your assignment or tomorrow at this particular hour from afternoon 2.30 to 3.30, you are having a test in this particular course. So such type of uh, personalized alerts uh, can go to the student. So in uh, most cases, it will include a mechanism for students to uh, get in touch with the instructor and the course director. So this is the most important part of it. The student uh, should be able to approach uh, his teacher, whether you call it by instructor or by the course director, whatever it is, 
so there should be a direct uh, link between the direct contact between the student and the teacher over here and the work can be submitted through student login and instructor or course director will subsequently access it and he should be able to assess it so uh, the what is uh, the key word over here is specifically in the lms system is it should be a smooth educational workflow that makes a sense for different environments included blended learning so in the next slide i am going to show you what is blended learning uh, blended learning is uh, the student is going to receive the physical uh, classroom training also physical teaching in the classroom and along with that he is going to give one he will be given a secondary supplement of the lms system over here that we are going to call it as a blended learning and uh, collaborate uh, within the system both instructor and students and students with students so students also will be able to interact with other other students of uh, the same course and also student and teacher interaction also has to be uh, very uh, critically the facility has to be provided over here so uh, um, uh, import uh, scorm i am going to discuss what is scorm in the next slide and the compliant content from educational content producers so i would like to uh, specifically talk here that sometimes uh, during this uh, particular covid period when we are going to send some file to the students uh, the student used to say that if i am going to send a pdf file or uh, if the content the pages are very large means when i am going to zip it and send it to the student he used to say that he is unable to open that particular file so at that time we had to tell him he has to install the right type of app in his uh, mobile and then he has to unzip the file and then he has to use that particular file so what is uh, this uh, seorm is here we are using a technology internet is there a client uh, uh, say uh, system is there and from where the lms whether the lms is hosted in the cloud or whether the lms is there in a server of a college from the server of the college or from the cloud the content has to go through the network and then it has to be delivered into the content to the device of that particular student and the file uh, should uh, say specifically uh, very easily it should be transferred to the student's device and the student should be able to open that particular file and read the content as a free if this is not going to happen then continuously the complaint is going to come that the file is not uh, we are unable to access the content or the file is not opening or we are unable to log into the page so this type of complaint we are going to get so that is why we whatever uh, the files that we are going to post in the lms it should be of uh, seorm norm so that i will discuss in the next slide so excuse me madam create uh, madam, administrator me. and score test generate reports for student teachers and administrators yeah sorry to interrupt you madam i think uh, it's time to get uh, right so with your permission yeah almost yeah i'll i'll stop here so i'll yeah. i'll give a break and then i'll continue thank you thank, thank you very you much okay